and praise to God. Uh, when they told me to uh, come up with a song, I was trying to think of a song that was familiar for everyone, but I'm always going back to these old hymns, and I remember singing this. I remember my grandmother uh, singing this, uh, this song. Come and go to that land. Come and go to that land. Come and go to that land. Where I'm bound, where I'm bound. Oh, come and go to that land. Come and go to that land. Come and go. a few verses therein. May the Lord. Fret not thyself because of evildoers. Neither do thou envy against the workers of iniquity. For they shall soon be cut down like the grass and wither as the green herb. Trust in the Lord and do good so that Thou shalt, thou shalt dwell in the land, yes, yes. and vanity thou shalt be fed. Yes. Delight thyself also in the Lord, yes. and he shall give thee the desires of thy heart. Yes. Commit thy ways unto the Lord. Trust also in him, and he shall bring it to pass. May the Lord have a blessing, the readers, the doers, and the hearers of his word. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done. On earth as it is in heaven. I give us thought this day our daily bread. And forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation. But deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, 
and the glory forever. Father God, we are here today, the day that you made, Father God. Lord, we thank you, Father God, for watching over us as we slept and slumbered last night, Father God. Lord, you are the one who sits high and looks down below. You are the supreme architect and creator of this universe, Father God. You have all power, Father God. Lord, we thank you, Father God, for waking us up, Father God, so we can be here today to serve in your church on Sunday morning, Father God. Lord, we saw another first Sunday, Father God, and we thank you, Father. Oh, Lord, if I had 10,000 tongues, Father, I couldn't thank you enough, Father God. Lord, we give you all the praise and all the honor, Father God, today. Lord, I ask that you touch each and everybody who is here under the sound of my weak voice today, Father God. Touch them in a special way, Father God. Lord, somebody's out there calling your name, Father God, asking for help, Father God, saying what should they do to be saved, Father God. Oh, Lord, I ask that you touch and, and, and spread your wings of love of our pastor of this church, Father God. Touch he and his family and all of the shepherds, Father God, that he teaches and preaches to on a daily basis, Father God. Lord, I ask that you touch the bereavement, Father God. We've lost some soldiers, Father God, these last few weeks, Father God. Only you know best, Father God. But we want to thank you, Father God, for their lives, Father God, and their lives that they served in this church, Father God. Lord, I ask that you heal the sick that is sick today, Father God. Physically, Father God. Mentally, Father God. Bring them up where they're torn down, Father God. Please, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Lord, I ask that you touch all of our families here, Father God, that is here. Bless those who are on their way, Father God. Lord, I can talk all day long, Father God, but I got a time limit, Father God. But there's no time limit for Jesus, Lord, Father God. And when it's all said and done, Father God, when we can talk no more, we can live no more here on this earth, Father God, I ask that you hold a special place for us, each and everybody here, Father God, in your holy kingdom, Father God, so that we can dwell and sing and praise your name forever and ever, Father God. I ask all of these blessings in your darling son's name, Jesus. Amen. And thank God. There was uh, one more verse. There is joy in this house. There is joy. Come on and praise the Lord, everybody. Come on, give God a praise in the house. Anybody grateful to be alive today? Come on and praise him. I said, come on and praise him. Come on and praise him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The presence of the Lord is here. I don't know about you, but I feel his presence. It's mighty churchy in here. Hallelujah. But I'm going to stay with the script. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, magnify him. He's done so much for us. I don't know about you, but he's been good to me. Has he been good to you? Come on, open up your mouth and shout. Come on, shout. Come on, shout to the Lord with the voice of triumph. Hallelujah. 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 
Hallelujah. You're more than welcome to stand to your feet as we go into praise and worship. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Whom shall I fear? Look to your neighbor and say, neighbor, don't worry. Hallelujah. Don't worry. The Lord is my light. He's the strength of my life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, put your hands together. The Lord is my light, salvation. Whom shall I fear? Whom shall I be afraid? The Lord is my light, salvation. Whom shall I fear? Whom shall I be afraid? I will wait on you. I will wait on you. I will trust in you. I will trust in you. Salvation, whom shall I fear? Whom shall I be afraid? The Lord is my light, He's my salvation. Whom shall I fear? Whom shall I be afraid? I will wait on you, I will wait. Anybody gonna wait on the Lord? On, I will trust in you. I will trust in you. Whoa, I will remain confident in this. I will see the goodness of the Lord. I will remain, I will remain confident, confident. I will see the Lord is my light, the Lord is my salvation. Whom shall I fear? Whom shall I be afraid? I'm so glad that the Lord is my light, my salvation. Whom shall I fear? Whom shall I be afraid? I will wait on you. I will wait. I will wait on you. Lord, I'm going to trust in you. I will trust in you. Come on, say, I will remain. Oh, I will remain. Confident in this, I will see. Sing it again. I will remain. Confident in this, I will see the goodness of the Lord. Put your hands together. Hallelujah. Come on, let's celebrate the King. We set our hopes on things above. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We set our hope on you. We set our hope on your love. We set our hope on the one who is the everlasting God. You are the everlasting God. We set our hopes on you, Jesus. We set our hopes on you. On your love. On the one. Oh, you are the everlasting. We set our hopes. We set our hopes. 
said, I hope on you, on your love, on the one who is. You are the everlasting God, and we're so grateful. Thank you, Jesus. some worship. Come on and give him some worship. Come on and give him some worship. Hallelujah. 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 Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Come on, praise him, everybody. Hallelujah. 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 Come on, just lift him up for just a moment. Just a, just a moment to lift him up. Come on, give him a sound. Oh, clap your hands, all you people. Shout unto the Lord with a voice of triumph. Let, let everything that have breath praise you the Lord. I got a reason to praise God. I got a reason to bless God. I got a reason to exalt his name. I got a reason to lift him up. Hallelujah. I got a reason. Hallelujah. I got a reason. Bless the Lord all my soul and all that's within me. Bless his holy name. Hallelujah. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praises shall continue to be in my mouth. Hallelujah. God is my refuge and my strength. A very present help in the time of trouble. Hallelujah. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not walk. Hallelujah. I will, I will, I will bless him. I will bless him. Weeping may endure for a night, but I, I know and declare that joy is coming in the morning. I, I know that joy is coming in the morning. I know that joy is coming in the morning. I know that joy is coming in the morning. I know that joy is coming in the morning. I know that joy is coming in the morning. I know that joy is coming in the morning. It's coming in the morning. It's coming in the morning. It's coming. Hallelujah. My, my, my. It's coming in the morning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Y'all excuse me. I came to praise him on purpose this morning. I came to praise him on purpose this morning. If it had not been for the Lord uh, who was on my side, uh, I don't know where I'd be. Hey, hey, blessed Lord, uh, hallelujah. Uh, if it had not, uh, uh, if it had not, hey, if it had not uh, been for the Lord, uh, hey, Glory to God. Yeah, let's give him some praise this morning. Bless 
Hey, glory, glory, glory. Can't nobody do me like Jesus. Can't nobody do me like the Lord. Can't nobody do me like Jesus. He's my friend. <laughs> He's my friend. He's my friend. <laughs> He's my friend. Glory. Uh, bless him. Hallelujah. All right. I, I really stood to welcome you to the birth of Mount Zion. <laughs> Church glory. You that are online, you're welcome. Hey, to praise the name of the Lord. You're welcome to glorify him. You're welcome to edify him. You're welcome. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. On behalf of Pastor Brian Darrell Hunter and to First Lady Lori Hunter, you, you're welcome in this house. Any, any first-time visitors in the house? First-time visitors, lift your hand. Yeah, stand. You, you, you good? You good. First time in the house? Come on, clap it up for you. We're glad that you chose to be here. I guarantee you shall not leave the same way you came, but you'll be blessed. You'll be blessed. Glory to God. You that are online, you're viewing. Thank you so much for God's goodness. And we want to just announce that Generation Next is upstairs to, to worship the Lord and praise him for his goodness. And I, I, I just want to announce and declare something in this house. Uh, my, my, my wife went into the surgery. I, I must say this. I must say this. She went into surgery Friday. Sister Lori, I, we, we went there. 11.30 a.m. It was for a same-day surgery. 12, 13 hours later, she was still in surgery. I, I had communication. Ah, bless his name. I had communication with the, with, 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 the, with the first surgeon who was working on it. She said, she said, Mr. Campbell, I had to stop because we found... We found a hole in her intestine, and we called a general surgeon in who wasn't even in the building, but he had to come and come and do the the second huh, the second operation. Glory to God! And then after he finished, he called me. He said, "Mr. Campbell," he said, "He said I did what I needed to do." He said, "Now the the first surgeon is going to finish you up what she had to do." I said, Lord have mercy. I said, what is going on? <laughs> what is going on? <laughs> but, but God told me, he said, I don't know, Reverend, Reverend. I don't, but, but you don't know that you prayed in advance. 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 And I work in the midnight hour. You prayed in advance. You prayed for something in advance. You prayed that God would move. You prayed in advance. You prayed in advance. You prayed in advance. While you prayed in advance, I heard your cry. I heard your cry. I heard your cry. I heard your cry. I come to declare to somebody, God heard your cry. He heard your cry. He heard your cry. In the midnight hour, he heard your cry. Bless him. And somebody, <laughs> hallelujah, somebody asked this morning, say, say, Reverend, <laughs> are you going to the house of God? <laughs> Aren't you tired? Aren't you weary? I said, I said, are you all crazy? <laughs> God has been so good to me. <laughs> I came on purpose. <laughs> I came on purpose <laughs> to Berkeley Mount Zion. Glory to God. This morning, <laughs> to lift him up, <laughs> to declare who he is. <laughs> 
to declare God is a great God, to declare he's worthy to be praised. He's worthy. He's worthy. He's worthy. Uh, Hallelujah. Who wouldn't serve a God like this? 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 Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. God is good. Hey, God is good. God is good. God is good. If you just lift him up for just a moment, God is good. Glory to God. That, that's, that's all I'm going to say right now. Ha, thank you. There's a whole lot more in between that, but that's all I'm going to say right now, that God is good. God is worthy to be praised. God is worthy. So if you see me run and jumping, if you see me skipping around, you know why I'm skipping. I got a reason. And in just for 30 seconds, if somebody got a reason to praise God, would you just help me lift him up for just, just 30 seconds? Come on. Just help me lift him up. Help me lift him up. Just 30 seconds. Come on. Help me lift him up. Help me lift him up. Help me lift Jesus in the house. Help me lift Jesus in the house. Help me lift Jesus. Help me lift Jesus in the house. Help me lift Jesus. Hey, Hallelujah. help me lift Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. What a setup. Look at how y'all daddy do y'all. <laughs> when you come to church, look at how y'all daddy set y'all up for deliverance. When you come into the building ready to praise him, look at how y'all daddy just set y'all up. Ain't your God a good God? Ain't he an amazing God? Ain't he an awesome God? Hallelujah, God. We bless your holy name this morning. If you did not have a reason to praise him, if your situation is that tough and heavy on your heart, I promise you this morning, you just witnessed God's glory. You sat in the presence of his glory on this morning. And if God can do it for Reverend Campbell, guess what? He can do it for you. You can set your heart in your prayer right on up to the Lord. Pray in advance. Cover your children in advance. Cover your grandchildren in advance. Cover your husband in advance. Cover your baby in the wound in advance. When you pray in advance, hallelujah, he said that it's already covered. It's his grace. Because of God's grace, it's sufficient for your situation. Hallelujah. I don't know what your situation is, but I know it's heavy. I don't know what your circumstance is, but I do know it's heavy. But if you set your heart on God on this morning, if you put that situation in the atmosphere and allow God to turn it around, allow him to work it his way, not your way, but his way, because if it comes out the way that you didn't want it to come, just know that it was God's way. And what you say to the Lord is, God, I didn't expect that. Because it was the unexpected, but I trust you anyhow. Hallelujah, because he's worthy. I know many of us are sitting in this place on today, and our heart is heavy. It is heavy, not just heavy in loss of bereavement, not as heavy in loss of situations, but we got real life circumstances that we're dealing with when we walk back outside that door. Some situations that we left at home that we got to go back to. But I promise you that if you put that situation in this atmosphere, that when you get back home, it's going to be a little bit different than when you came here on today. When you get to work on tomorrow morning, your manager going to look at you a little bit different than she did on last week. When you get that phone call that you wasn't expecting, but it came anyhow, you're going to feel a little bit different if you just put it in the atmosphere on today. Because God is ready. He is able to do exceedingly and abundantly more than we can ever ask or think. 
But if you trust him with all your heart, not with your understanding, but trust him, I promise you it's going to turn out a little bit different. Amen. So we bless God this morning and we give him all praise, honor, and glory for who he is because I got a situation, you got a situation, and we all got circumstances. So if you all are able and if you can stand to your feet while we go to the throne on this morning with our situations and our circumstances and whatever it is that's pressing on your heart on this morning, go ahead and put it in the atmosphere. You got your mask on. Your neighbor don't know what you're really talking about. Can't nobody read your lips. So if it's something like me, I got something deep in my heart this morning and you all don't know the circumstance but I'm going to put it in the atmosphere because I'm trusting that God's going to have his way in that situation hallelujah so don't be ashamed of what it is whatever you're praying to God for whatever you're seeking him for put it in the atmosphere I trust and believe that somebody has already gone through your situation hallelujah so we bless the Lord this morning. Every head is bowed and your hearts are turned to God on this morning. Heavenly Father, we come to you this morning with our situations and our circumstances, God. First, God, we're giving you thanks because we don't know the outcome, but you do. So we're going to thank you in advance for the outcome of the situation, oh God. And we thank you, God, because you saw fit for us to be here on this day, God. You gave us traveling grace. You gave us new mercy this morning, God. Some of us didn't have the strength, God, to rise. Some of us were sick in our bodies this morning, God. Some of us, our hearts were so heavy, God, that we couldn't get dressed this morning, God. But we sought you. We sought you as we sat on the side of the bed. And we thanked you in advance for your grace and for your mercy, God. We thanked you, God, because we know that if you have your way, that it, 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 it will be all right, God. So this morning, God, we thank you for your sovereignty, God. We don't understand why you took our loved one home, God. We don't understand why you had to take the mother home. We don't understand why you had to take the sister home, God. We don't understand why our son had to die on the streets, God. We don't understand why our children are sitting behind prison walls, God. But we thank you, Father, in advance because you know why and let you have your way in their life, in their situation, God. So we trust you, God. We trust you that you took our loved one home, God, but you took one life to save many, God. And so we thank you, Father. You set one down, God, behind prison walls, but to save many, God, because that one is ministering behind prison walls, God, and somebody is sitting there, God, and they know who you are because of the one that you set down, God, but they are saving many lives, God, behind prison walls, Father. We don't understand, Father, why our children's schools are being shot up, Father, but you know. And so, God, we lift hearts this morning, God, and we thank you in advance for the souls that you have saved, God. We thank you in advance for the angels that you have brought back home to yourself, God. And we give you praise, God, because we don't understand, but, God, we trust you in the situation and the circumstance, Father, in the name of Jesus. Father God, this morning we come to you bearing forgiveness, God, asking that you forgive us for our sins and our transgressions, God. Forgive us for those things that we've said and done, God, that may have offended our brothers and sisters in Christ, God, may have offended our children, God, it may have offended our neighbor, but God, we come asking that you forgive us this morning, God, in the name of Jesus. Father God, forgive us for our transgressions against our husbands and our wives, God. Forgive us, Father, for those things that we've done, God, that was just unlike our normal behavior, God, but we're asking for forgiveness on today. We come with repentance on our hearts on this morning, God. Thanking you, God, for your forgiveness, for forgiving us. And so, God, we forgive those that trespass against us this morning, God, in the name of Jesus. Father, God, we thank you and we bless you, Heavenly Father. For the pastor of this house, the under shepherd of this house, Pastor Brian Hunter, God, we thank you for the ministry that you've endowed in him, God. We thank you for his heart of compassion for your people, God. We thank you, Father, that he gave his life to Christ, God, so that souls may be changed, God. But we ask, God, that you walk with him and you talk with him and you lead and you guide him and you protect him, Father, in the mighty name of Jesus. God, give him the wherewithal to stand when trouble comes, God. 
Give him the know-how, God. Give him the resilience to overcome those circumstances and situations, God, that he cannot change, God, but he can trust you through them, Father, in the name of Jesus. Father God, we bless you and thank you, Father, for Sister Lori Broomhunter, God. And we thank you, God, for her ministry, Father, because we thank you, God, that you have given her the gift of love, to love children, Father, to love them as they need to be loved, to nourish them as they need to be nourished, Father. And we thank you, God, that you have given her a legacy to love God. And we ask, God, that you continue to protect and to guide her. Comfort her heart when there's trouble, God. Give her a mind of peace, oh, Father, in the mighty name of Jesus. God, we thank you for their marriage, Father, that you have ordained, God, that, that you called into one, God. Let their ministry go forth in you, Father, that souls will be saved on every corner, oh, Father, in every community, Father, in every city that they land in, Father. Somebody, life will be saved because they see the ordained couple that you see walking through, God, that you guide them through, God, in the name of Jesus, Father. And we bless you and we thank you, Heavenly Father, for the mothers of this great church, Father. All of our senior mothers and our spiritual mothers, we thank you and we bless you for them, God. And we ask, God, that you continue to be their peace, to be their light in the storm, God. To be their comfort, Father, in the name of Jesus, God. And give them someone, God. Give them a mentee that they can mentor to, Father. Someone that is seeking wisdom, seeking understanding, seeking knowledge, God, in the name of Jesus. Let them pour into those in the next generation that are looking for someone to guide them, Father, in the name of Jesus. And, Father God, we thank you and we bless you for every deaconess of the Berkeley Mount Zion Church, oh, Father. And we bless you for all of our deacons, God, that you have called them, Father. You have called them by name. And so we thank you for their hearts of compassion towards your people, Father. And we thank you, God, that they are the deacons that are always there, always present, always on time, God. And so we ask, Father, that you raise up the next generation, God, and that you connect them, Father, bind them as one in unity, Father, that we will continue to have great deacons in this great church that will go out into the communities and the byways and the highways of the street, God, spreading your truth, oh, Father, in the mighty name of Jesus. And so, Father God, we thank you this morning for everyone that is online with us on this morning, God. We ask that you meet them at the point of their need. Whatever their need is, God, we ask that you meet them there, Father, in the name of Jesus. And, Father God, we thank you and we bless you for the homeless, God, that are under the streets, God, on the highways, God. Those that are sleeping in encampments, God. Those that are sleeping in abandoned buildings, Father, we thank you, God, that one day, God, you will build them a home that they can call their own, oh, God, in the mighty name of Jesus. God, we thank you for the hospitals and the skilled nursing facilities, Father. Touch them, Father. Move by your power and by your Holy Spirit, Father, on those in the prison wall systems, Father. Those that have been sitting there for injustice assistances, Father. Father, those that have been sentenced there, Father, not because of the crime they committed, but because of the people that sat there and caused the sentence to happen, Father. But this morning, God, we know that you are able to do exceedingly more and abundant than we can ever ask or think, Father. So as you did for Paul and Silas, God, you opened up the jail cells. Do it for your children on today, oh God. Open up the jail cells and grant probation, Father. Grant freedom, Father, in the name of Jesus. Touch every district attorney's heart, oh Father. Touch every public defender's heart, oh God, in the name of Jesus. Jesus. Move by your power and by your Holy Spirit, God, on every Supreme Court justice system, God, in the mighty name of Jesus. And so, Father God, we thank you this morning for the word that will go forth, oh, Father, for the ones whose life will be changed, that salvation will converge here, God, on the corner of 8th and Camellia, Father. The Holy Spirit is already present, so we ask, God, that you have your way on today, oh, Father. Let souls be changed, Father. Let salvation take place, oh, Father, and let deliverance happen in the mighty name of Jesus. And we'll be sure to give you praise, God, to give you honor and to give you glory in advance. And we thank you, Father, for every broken heart that's healed, for every mind that is at peace, oh God, and blesses our children on today, oh God, as they begin to go back to school, God, cover them in the name of Jesus, and we'll be giving you praise, God, honor, and glory. It is in Jesus' name that we pray, and we seal this prayer with praise, shouting hallelujah, clapping with our hands, God, thanking you in advance that it is already done, God, it's already done, and we say yes, God. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah, God. In Jesus' name, amen.
Come on, let's clap those hands, everybody. Hallelujah. Truly, we love the Lord today. Hallelujah. He's a worthy God. Come on, clap your hands. If you know that God is your everything, you ought to clap your hands, everybody. Hallelujah. time of the storm. Jehovah Jireh, he's my provider. My everything, my everything, my everything, my everything. Isaiah called him wonderful, wonderful counselor. Call him in the midnight. God. 
everything. My everything. My everything. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Whoa. one witness that knows that he is your everything. He's my healer. He's my savior. He's my deliverer. Oh yes he is. He is my savior. In the time of the storm, he's my shelter. He makes ways, ways out of nowhere. Closed in my face, my everything, my everything. Oh, yes, he is. Oh, yes, he is. His name is Jesus. His name is Jesus. His name is Jesus. Oh, yeah. Put your hands together. Hallelujah. Oh, God is. God is. God is. God is. God is. God is. My everything. Come on, if he's your everything, give him praise. Come on and give him glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Jesus never fails. Jesus never fails. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. And because he's our everything, we found him to be the lifter of our heads. Hallelujah. Anybody ever been in a dry place, hallelujah, and you just needed a lift, and you turned around and God was right there, hallelujah. I'm a living testimony that he is the lifter, hallelujah.
Thank you for being our lifter. Thank you for being our lifter. Thank you for being our lifter. Thank you for being the lifter. Is he your lifter? Hallelujah, you're the lifter. Hallelujah. Thank you for being our lifter, Jesus. Hallelujah. We glorify you. We magnify you. Hallelujah. We stretch our hands to thee. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, 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 Jesus, hallelujah, Jesus, nobody like you, Jesus, nobody like you, Jesus, nobody like you, Jesus, nobody like you, Jesus, when we were in a low, a low place, oh God, you lifted our heads, hallelujah. And we're grateful for that, oh God. Hallelujah. You're the lifter. You're the lifter. You're the lifter of my head. The lifter. Come on, that's it. Cry out to him. You're the lifter. You're the lifter. Oh, my head. Can we sing it together? You're the lifter. You're the lifter. Come on, can we just say that all over the house? You're the lifter. You're the lifter. Come on, of my head. Of my head. I don't know what you're dealing with, but God knows. And he's able to lift it right now. Hallelujah. Come on, just lift your hands and sing it. You're the lifter. Yeah. Hallelujah. If you believe God today, you ought to declare it that he's the lifter. Hallelujah. Of my head. Of my head. Come on, say. You're the lifter. You're When I didn't know which way to turn, Jesus. You're Hallelujah. You are the lifter of my head, of my head. Come on, right where you are, you ought to give him some worship. Hallelujah. Come on, give him some worship, everybody. Come on, if you're online today watching us, you can worship him right where you are. Hallelujah. We know God to be our lifter. Hallelujah. When times get rough, he is the lifter. When times get hard, he is the lifter. When we don't know which way to turn, he is the lifter. When we're going through bereavement, he is the lifter. Sick in my body, he is the lifter. You are 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 the lifter of my head. You are the lifter of my head. You are the lifter. You are the lifter. You are the lifter. You are the lifter. You're the lifter, you're the lifter, you're the lifter of, you're the lifter of my
Have your way, Jesus. Have your way, Jesus. Many of you are brokenhearted, but allow him to have his way. Hallelujah. That floods my soul. Oh, something happened. And now I know. What did he do? He touched me. Sister Phyllis, he touched me. And all, oh, all oh, the joy that floods my soul. Woo! Something, something happened. And now I Glory, glory. Come on, clap your hands, everybody. Oh. Mm. He touched me. Yes, 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 yes. Yes, yes. Go ahead, go ahead. Nobody's stopping you. Nobody's stopping you. Go ahead. Go ahead. Yes. 
I sense and recognize a move of God. I sense and recognize a move of God. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, yes, yes. He touched me. Yes. He's a lifter of my soul. What a mighty God. And I'm, I'm going to ask you to do something with Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Thank you, Jesus. My God, my God. Lord Jesus. If you would, I just want you to rest on your feet and we're going to receive our pastor, Pastor Brian Durrell Hunter. But while, we, while we're doing that, he, he wasn't here the other week when I did a congratulatory announcement of him matriculating to the upper echelon. Can I say it for you? <laughs> Master's degree of divinity. We are honored for you. We bless God for you. We thank God for you. Amen. Keep standing because the spirit of the Lord God is moving. He's touching right now. And we I, I, I just I, I wanted to pause and tell him congratulations, but uh, to the King of Kings and to and to the Lords of Lord, come on, just put your hands together, come on, let's welcome him into this house, come on, hey, bless his name. Listen, isn't it just like God to know exactly what needs to be said and what needs to be done for this house, for, for the season we're in, for this house, what they ministered today could have been ministered last week, but it was needed today. So that's why the psalmist says, lift up your heads, O ye gates. No Bible readers, Lord, about here. And be ye lifted up, ye everlasting doors. And the king of glory shall come in. I will lift up mine eyes unto the hills from which cometh my help, and my help cometh from the Lord who made heaven and earth. I was sinking deep in sin, far from the peaceful shore very deeply stained within, seeking to rise no more. But the master, come on, where are y'all at? Of the sea, heard my despairing cry. And from the waters, 
he lifted me. Now say, am I? The Lord knew today. Today, Trina, you needed to be here today. Today, you needed to be here. And isn't it just like God? to know what we need, when we need it, and how much we need. Won't lie, this is a heavy time for our family. Things are happening, things have happened uh, unexpectedly, as life oftentimes does. But there are times where it just kind of knocks you off your, your, your square. And so hopefully by the time we say goodbye, that there's something that has been said or done that has encouraged you, that has uh, allowed you to lift up <laughs> your, your head. And it may not be something that comes from the platform. Sometimes it might be with somebody who's sitting right next to you. Sometimes you need a smile. Sometimes you need a nod. Sometimes you need somebody just to hold your hand. And so listen, I need you all to give uh, our praise team a hand of encouragement for leading us. Come on, we can do better than that. Leading us into the presence of God. And just for the spirit of the Lord, uh, knowing that he, he didn't miss, he didn't miss this, this house. Uh, you, you all can be seated if you like, amen. I, you can stand all the whole service if you want to, uh, but if, 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 you, if you like, you can, you can be seated. That's why some of you are not called to preach, because you can't stand long, amen. Uh, but, but amen, <laughs> yeah, 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 amen. Listen, I don't know about you, amen, I am just delighted and excited, amen, to be back in uh, the house, amen. Many of you know that for two weeks, for two weeks, uh, we have been uh, gone, it's been a whirlwind uh, uh, kind of schedule, but I'm glad to be in the house. I thank God for the last two weeks. Uh, on last week, we thank God for evangelist Jackie Melton, who came uh, and ministered in this house. Thank you, thank you so, so very much. Uh, for uh, all you do. Thank you so much. Appreciate you, sir. Thank you. Amen. Uh, he, he doesn't know, but God knows yeah. that uh, I've been in and out of different places, hot to cold, to fan, to air conditioning, and my, my throat is not. And so look, look at God, even through Brother Maurice, give me something to, to kind of give me, <laughs> to give me a... And so, uh, again, we thank God. We thank God for the first week that we were uh, away uh, in person of Brother Damon Evans, uh, who came even during our usher's annual day. Amen. And so uh, thank you, thank you, thank you uh, for allowing uh, your pastor, amen, to uh, be a part of life events. One of the things I did, uh, my daughter, uh, Imara, is in college, uh, and uh, I wanted to go and just be there. Uh, and spend, had to spend a lot of money at, at Costco and uh, Ikea, <laughs> amen. But it is the joy of our life, uh, seeing and raising uh, our children. Uh, so, so thank you, thank you. I remember many of you who know who Mother Ross is. When she left here, she gave me a bit of advice. She said, it's okay for you to miss sometimes. Up until that point, I had never missed a Sunday. And so I'm learning, uh, Deacon Cole, that uh, the older I get, amen, the building is not going to fall apart. Uh, and if it is, and if it does, that is a bad, bad, bad sign. Uh, but we got to be able to, to hold it up. So thank you, thank you for the people that you continue to be. Uh, and as we continue to minister and continue to try to do what uh, is necessary. 
A uh, couple of things I want to do uh, as I minister today. I don't want to break the uh, break the flow and the rhythm of, of what it is that we're going to do. Uh, and so Brother Jeff is taking some children to the bathroom. But as you take them to the restroom, you need to stay because you need to help us uh, get ready for uh, things that are upcoming. Uh, let, let me let me just say this uh, as as they're uh, preparing. Uh, uh, this year will mark, uh, I think, 15 years that I've been here. I have n never missed vacation Bible school. Mm -hmm. 14 years I've been here the whole, uh, and uh, I was able to come, come one night. Uh, but many of you know that when people see the finished product uh, in church, they have no idea uh, the months and the weeks and the calls and the money and the blood and sweat and tears and you staying up all night long thinking about this and making sure that it happens. People canceling out on you, people saying they're going to be there, but they're not there. Uh, and so uh, I want to uh, just thank a man, Sister Phyllis Smith, who was our Vacation Bible School director. Come on, stand up, Sister Phyllis. The lady in red. And why don't you come on up? Amen. I, I can't tell you how many conversations, uh, text messages uh, we have had uh, regarding Vacation Bible School. Amen. And, and, and come on, we family here. Many of you know, uh, and I'll talk about this in just a moment, that the Lord called home a uh, dear, dear member of our church, Sister Gwen. Uh, Sister Phyllis and Sister Gwen were sisters. They were tight. They were tight, tight, tight. Amen. And so uh, even in the midst of your, your, your uh, journey, in the midst of what's happening now, I want you to know how much we appreciate you, how much we uh, look to you, how much we, you inspire us. I told Sister Lord, you can't buy a Phyllis Smith, amen. That, that's, that's old school church, old school commitment, amen. And so we want you to know just as a token of our appreciation, uh, and we wanted to give you uh, this. Hopefully it'll lighten your day, brighten your day, something. But know that your labor is not in vain. And though these are flowers from us, one day the master will say, well done thy good and faithful servant. You've been faithful over a few things. Now come on up, and I'll make you ruler over many. So again, God bless you. Thank you, thank you, thank you for all that you've done uh, during Vacation Bible School and all that you do. Amen, I didn't think so. Come on, y'all, let's give her another hand if you would. Amen. Amen. So, so, so uh, please know and understand, I think Sister Phyllis had been working on Vacation Bible School. Uh, she was going back to maybe July of last year. <laughs> Amen. And she talking about it. And uh, she, she is uh, looking. Uh, we talked about even her passing the baton. Amen. Which is uh, a great thing. Oftentimes people get in church and they hold on forever. Amen. Uh, and so we, <laughs> we bless God for, for, for her. Uh, I, I, I want you to know this and, and I want to just kind of give you, share some other things with you. Uh, one of the most helpless times as a pastor is when the Lord calls uh, family members home. Because normally when people come to the pastor, they th are assuming, sometimes I do, sometimes I don't, but they're assuming that uh, I, I can do something to make it better. Uh, but when the Lord calls one of his children home, there's nothing that I can do but walk with them through that season. And so many of you know every now and then, even though your loved one might have passed away two or three years ago, you'll receive a text from me. 
how are you doing today? Mother's Day, Father's Day, you'll receive something from me because the journey is still, even after the funeral, home going, we, we still walking, walking that, that journey. And, and, and let me just say this really quickly. Uh, the Bible says Jesus wept. And if he's our model, what would Jesus do? His friend died. And the Bible says, but you know what we say? Be strong. You, you want me to be strong and the physical presence of my loved one and you want me to be strong? All right, this is not you all. I need to talk to somebody that hears what I'm saying. I feel pain in my heart like I've never felt. And here we are saying, God makes no mistakes. Come on, think about that, saints. Think about that. With pain in our hearts, who wants to hear God makes no mistakes? Yeah, I know Jesus. I know God can do everything. I know all of that. But where are the real people that understand that even though I know Jesus, I still feel tremendous pain in my heart. So can I tell you all, sometimes we need to pull back and really think about some of the things we say to each other as we walk through and try with well intentioned. But when pain is in my heart, probably not the best time to say earth has no sorrow that heaven can't heal. I even say to myself as I'm preaching the funeral, the family is in grief. So at that point, they're probably not hearing a whole lot about what I'm saying. So if Jesus wept and he's our model and he didn't try to fake it, nobody told him to be strong. He didn't tell nobody, give me a tissue. He wept. And so even as we walk through times of bereavement with each other, learned this a long time ago, I don't have to carry a Bible. I'm not quoting no scriptures. I'm not preaching a sermon. I just want to be with you. So if they sit and don't say nothing, guess what? You don't say nothing. When they want to talk, you talk. Because many of you know that in the span of a few moments, you can go from laughing. Okay, it's not you all. Let me try you again. To anger. To frustration. This side here. To drinking something. And at the end of the day, the families I've sat with, walked with through bereavement, they never uh, repeated what I said when I was there. Not one. You know what they remember? The only thing they remember was that at some point in time, I was there. If you ever read the book of Job, Job was in a bad way physically all the way around and the Bible says for seven days his best friend sat with him and said nothing heavy time for this house and so at some point I'm asking you to be sensitive and to really think about what we're saying well-intentioned, but oftentimes it can even be insulting. Can I give you one more? 
that's their mother, their loved one, not yours. So please keep in mind that saying, I know how you feel because I lost my mother. It's different because your mother wasn't my mother. And again, well-intentioned. But I need us to continue to mature and to think about sometimes the cliches and the empty phrases we use in an attempt to comfort one another. So even as we minister and talk to uh, Kelly and Mahala and Gary, be, be, be sensitive to their wishes, sensitive to how you engage with them. And it's probably not a good idea to tell anyone not to cry. When Jesus stood at the tomb of his friend, and the Bible says he wept. If I could tell you, Deacon Clarence, wept does not mean he just wept meant shoulder shaking, crying. So we will uh, very shortly celebrate, amen, the homegoing celebration for Sister Gwen Easter. Uh, and it's difficult for me to stand here and to look there and, and not see her. Many of you know and remember Sister Mary Blackburn. We affectionately called her uh, G-Mama. Uh, had a grandson uh, in the prime of his life. Uh, Lord called him home as well. Uh, I've spent a couple of years walking with uh, G-Mama uh, through uh, just her praying for her grandson and hoping and wishing the best, his ups and his downs. And the Lord called him home. Uh, his homegoing celebration will be here uh, August 12th at 11 a.m. But I need you to keep family again in your prayers uh, as we come together uh, to remember uh, and just to, uh, to celebrate his life uh, and to celebrate that on this side he knew the Lord as his personal Lord and Savior. And uh, he's gone on to see, to see the Master. So listen, uh, pray for your pastor. I, I have emotions too. So, so, so pray, and Deacon Clarence, the longer I stay, the, 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 the more you connect in relationships. My pastor, my first church, I was doing about three or four funerals a month and didn't know those people at all. And so sometimes it became uh, just preaching a message because it's a, but when you really have to stand, talk about somebody you know, talk about somebody that wasn't afraid to say things to you and it becomes increasingly, uh, it becomes more difficult. So, so keep your pastor in, in, in prayer. Uh, I oftentimes say to the ministers that we come to service, walking the thin line of worship and work. So when I come, I want to be a worshiper too. But I'm still working because at the end of the day, uh, you all don't come to hear my troubles and my pressures. You come that you might hear something from heaven through Hunter that will encourage you and help you before you leave here today. So again, uh, uh, with all that said, please continue to keep the Easter uh, family in your prayers. Continue to keep uh, uh, Mary Blackburn, G Mama's family uh, in your prayers. And uh, today I feel such a not, 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 a, not a sad heaviness, but you can, f I feel the weight in here. 
Not, not overwhelmingly sad as if we don't know what to do. But as your pastor, I feel the weight in here. Not weighty, not demonic. Just, just heavy. But <laughs> he is the lifter of your head. Come on, let's give the Lord a hand of praise in here if you would. Listen, thank you. Thank you for your, your, your patience. Uh, I got two things that I have to do. I don't want to uh, interrupt the flow as we move into... Uh, into uh, into communion, thank you. Uh, so bear with me with, with the two things. Many of you know that uh, for many of your children, grandchildren, nieces, nephews, uh, school has already started. If it has not, it will be starting in the next couple of weeks. Uh, how do I know that? Because you're buying uniforms, you're buying school clothes, you're buying Jordans and school supplies and all those kinds of things. Anybody remember not, not, not uh, growing up, uh, you, you, you had one pair of school shoes. <laughs> Not something to match every outfit. One. And, and you and 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 not that my mama, she started us off with a few outfits. My how things have changed. <laughs> and so listen, uh several students have, have gone back uh and there is a young man that has been connected to uh, this ministry. Uh, and I've watched him grow up. I've watched him uh, move into uh, young manhood uh, and still expecting uh, great things from, for him. He is going to be leaving uh, on the 10th. When is the 10th? What's today's day? Today is the 6th, 7th, Wednesday. Wednesday is the 10th. Okay. He'll be leaving from, from on the 10th, and I want to uh, pray for him before he leaves. There's uh, something that we want to put in his hand. There will be something else that we'll put in his hand as well uh, just to encourage him and just let him know uh, that Berkeley Mount Zion is supporting you. Berkeley Mount Zion is pushing you. Uh, and so I need you all <clears throat> to put your hands together uh, for Brother Jaheem. Amen. Come on. Come on up. I'm going to stand on this step right here, because if I stand down there, he, I won't be able to see him face to face. <laughs> Amen. He haven't always been this tall, either. And he haven't had all that hair, either. Amen. Uh, but I, I want you to know how very, very proud of, of you we are, uh, how we've watched you uh, grow. I can't think of a time where I've ever asked you to do anything, and you've ever turned us down. Uh, you are articulate. Uh, the times I've talked to you candidly, uh, it lets me know, amen, that you uh, have your head on right, amen. And let me say this, I encourage you as you go away to experience college. Somebody knows what I'm saying. If you don't do it now, when you get to be 40 and 50, you'll be trying to experience what you should have experienced during your time. Now, let me say this. Uh, his mother, Minister LaShonda, done a great job raising. And for many of us, even though there is experiencing, oftentimes there is a line. Come on, I wish I had somebody who knew that, that I might get close to it. You, you might get close to it. <laughs> but, but you know you're not going to step over. And, and how do I know that? I know that because he's already done that here. And so experience it to the fullest. You'll never get this time back. You'll never be as strong and as keen and as uh, just ambitious as you are now. Amen. So I want you to tell the people where you're going. Amen. And uh, 
Um, I'll be going to Alabama A&M University. And I'll be studying business and marketing. Amen. And so uh, wanted to make sure uh, that we pray next week, amen, we'll have our official back to school uh, uh, time. But because he won't be here, I wanted to make sure that uh, we, we prayed uh, for him. Uh, so, so let's stand together. And the Bible says oftentimes that Jesus even was in a position of where he wanted to bless the children. And his disciples said, no, don't bother the master. And the Bible says, Jesus said, no, let them let come. When you bless a child, listen, you're doing two things. You're speaking and you're touching. Speaking words of affirmation, speaking words of encouragement, speaking words of prohibition, speaking words of identity. And in some way, by holding a hand, by hugging, blessing is touching and talking. And you'll be amazed how it shapes the life of a child when there's no talking and there's no touching. You'll be amazed how it affects the child when there is touching and talking. Even me, I'm a grown man, got kids, got bills in my own name that come just about every 30 days. And yet, I miss my own dad saying, I'm proud of you. Never shall forget Deacon uh, Clarence Williams, we were at a, a, a funeral. I don't think we were, we, we were at uh, 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 Artemisi's uh, uh, a grave, and we, we were reminiscing, and we were reflecting. And as we were leaving, he probably doesn't even remember this. He said, Pastor, I'm proud of you. For him, small words. But he doesn't know how much that resonated in him and with me. So I'm going to ask that you close your eyes. So, Father, we bless you and we thank you now. That before Jahim was conceived, you already had plans for him. <laughs> you already ordained his life, a life of purpose. So I pray even now, out of all the things that he has grown through, all the things that he has gone through, the things that he has seen, the things that have shaped him, I pray above all that even as he takes his next step, that he will continue to find his purpose and his gifts. So I pray even as he moves across the country, that the things that his mom and family has instilled in him would never be thrown by the wayside. But that in moments of challenge, in moments of decision, in moments of pressure, he will remember and bring back to his remembrance the things he was taught. So even now, we speak academic excellence into his life right now. We speak that every dime is going to be there to pay for his education. So we speak that there will be no lack, there will be no uh, nothing that he will want. I thank you for every meal. I thank you for him having enough to share something with somebody else. Pray that you would open doors for him. Pray that you would connect him with friends that have purpose, that have their head on right, that want to do what's right. 
And I pray even as he has experiences that will continue to add to his life, I pray right now, Lord, that there will still be something in his spirit and in his mind that pulls him back when he knows this is going too far. So I pray for his protection. I pray that you would keep his body strong, that you would keep his mind sharp. And we speak dean's list. We speak academic excellence. We speak leadership. And we thank you for those who will follow him and recognize who he really is. We thank you for teachers recognizing his gifts, teachers who are recognizing his leadership and allow him to stand. Somebody will say, we've never had a student like this. Pray that his body is free of sickness and disease. Pray for his protection. And when it's all said and done, when he walks across the stage, give him to remember that the first semester you were with him. Third, fourth trimester, you were with him. And at the end of the day, he will give you all the praise, honor, and glory because it would have never happened without you. So I thank you for the steps he's already made. I thank you for uh, just the grades that he's been able to get just to be able to go to the school of his choice. So as a church family, we bless him. We speak words of affirmation to him and let him know that he has a family. Let him know that he has people who care. Let him know that he has people who love him. Let him know that there are people that will uh, reprimand him. <laughs> Discipline him because all we see are great things and the enemy wants to destroy him while he's young. So thank you, Lord, for this time. Thank you for this gift. Thank you that we have the opportunity to pray for him as he makes the trek all the way to Alabama, representing his family, representing his siblings, representing uh, himself, representing the Berkeley Mount Zion Church. And we thank you for a job well done in advance. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Come on, y'all. Let's give the Lord a hand of praise in here if you would. All right. God bless you. And uh, I encourage him to uh, don't, don't rush off after service. Amen. <laughs> you might want to just kind of. Stay in the front there somewhere because every now and then somebody wants to bless you, somebody wants to wish you well, uh, and he would never want to uh, uh, rob you of your, of your blessing. Uh, so we want to be, be, uh, be a blessing. And so on that note, uh, we have one more thing, and then we'll get to uh, our, our word, uh, and I'll cut some of what I'll say because, you know, amen. So, Brother Jeff, if you'll come, amen. Good afternoon, church. How you guys doing? Uh, good to see everyone. I've been upstairs with your, your babies and your children. We're having a wonderful time. Just as um, Pastor Hunter was talking, your um, children are upstairs learning about the mercy of God as well. We're upstairs learning through a series of the attributes of God. And we're on nine attributes so far. And they're learning that God is just, that God is trustworthy, that he's faithful, that he's omnipotent, that he's omniscient. So they're up there learning as well as you're learning down here, and they're learning at a rate and a speed that they can digest it. And so I just want to stand and let you know that as they prepare to return to school, Generation Next and the Berkeley Mount Zion family is going to support them. We're having a backpack giveaway. We've already purchased the backpacks. We've already purchased the materials, the school supplies. We have them. We got the pencils. We got the notebooks. We got the markers. We got the calculators. We got the things that they're going to need to succeed already upstairs. What I need for you guys to do as a family is to make sure next Sunday we have the children to give those backpacks to because we don't want to keep no backpack. Because if we keep a backpack, that means that's a child that goes without. 
that's a child that maybe doesn't get to that first day with the learning tools that they need. So we have the tools upstairs. Make sure that we get the kids here so we can give those tools out to them. And Pastor Hunter, as you stood and you prayed over Brother Jaheem, I was just sitting there and I was thinking that, as you said, don't leave too early because there might be a blessing waiting for him. So if I can ask Brother Jaheem to come back up because Generation Next and the Berkeley Mount Zion family would like to bless him right now. We want to send him off. Because just as the young people are leaving, and he's going to school, he's going to need some tools as well. And so we don't want to send him. I know in the past we've done showers, we've done big baskets. And I was saying, well, he's going all the way across the country. Let's not give, send him with more stuff to carry. Let's just put him in a position when he gets there, he can buy those things that he needs himself. So we hope that you get everything that you need. Your family is here for you. We're here to support you in any way that we can. And once again, next Sunday, the backpack giveaway will be happening upstairs in the Generation Next. We got next worship service from the hours of 10 to 12. Please bring your children, your grandchildren, your nieces, your nephews, so we can bless them and send them off in the right way so they can go and have a successful year of learning. Thank you. Come on, let's, let's stand together. <clears throat> Amen. Father, we bless you and we honor you. We thank you again for just being able to gather, being able to experience your presence. You said that where two or three are gathered in your name, you will be right in the midst. But there are more than two or three gathered, and thank you for being in the midst. So even now as we come and study your word, we pray that you would let your spirit teach us and show us us. Not our member, not, not our neighbor, not our, our spouse, not a sibling, but show us us that you might continue to shape and mold us into the very image of your son. Thank you for what you will say. Thank you for your word now. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. While you're standing, meet me in Luke chapter 22. Luke 22. If, if the Lord says the same, uh, we have been walking through a loose series entitled The Meal Ministry of the Master. Uh, this will be our last uh, installment. Uh, the Lord is, is pressing upon me to, to, visit, uh, to visit something else. Uh, but Luke 22, amen. Luke 22. And look, if you will, at verse number 47. Luke 22 gives us the narrative of Jesus, uh, who has just had his last meal before the cross with his disciples. They move from the upper room with the meal, and he finds himself praying about the agony of going to the cross. Shouting news is, is that even Jesus questioned doing the will of God. Verse number 47 in that context says, and while he yet spoke, he looked up and there was a multitude. And he that was called Judas, one of the twelve, went before them and drew near unto Jesus to kiss him. But Jesus said unto him, Judas, you, you, you betraying me? With a kiss? Amen. 
Look at somebody and tell them it's necessary. <laughs> That's what I want to talk about. Salt, pepper, garlic powder, cumin, crab boil bag. Sausage, chicken, yeah, somebody's going to get me in a minute, bell peppers, shrimp, come on, I feel you all right in here, the rest are still trying to figure it out, uh, 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 ch ch chicken broth, m m many of you know that I just described the ingredients of gumbo. Uh, and uh, though I've never cooked gumbo, uh, I, I've seen it made. Uh, since Lori makes it from time to time. Uh, I've never made gumbo, but I do know what should be in gumbo. Uh, and though you might make it a little bit different, amen, gumbo, when it's real gumbo, you know it's real gumbo, amen. I, I just read a list off to you, and uh, some of you all are still saying in your mind that there was something that the pastor uh, forgot to include in his ingredients. Uh, and do you not know there was a time I went and had gumbo at a friend's house. Uh, he had joked about making gumbo, and so I pressed him to it. I said, no, let's not just talk about it. I want you to actually go head on, and I need you to do it. And do you not know that he had all the ingredients? He had all uh, the expensive shrimp and crab and all that in there, uh, and I could not wait uh, uh, to eat his gumbo. And do you not know that when I ate his gumbo, uh, even though he had all the things that were required and necessary, in the gumbo, it just didn't taste the same. Amen. Uh, and so just because I was at his house, uh, I began to try to take another spoonful. Uh, anybody know that you might not make it on the first spoonful, but maybe the second or the third. And uh, no matter how many spoonfuls I took, uh, it just was not the same. Are y'all in the building? Uh, and because you're at somebody else's house, uh, you don't want to be rude. Uh, but gumbo is not something you just keep on eating and eating if it's not right. So I turned to my friend. I said, man, you got all this good ingredients in there. Uh, you got the best chicken. You got the best shrimp. You got a uh, good old sausage. Uh, but this just doesn't taste like gumbo that I'm used to. And he says, well, I, I did all the steps. I did everything. He says, but the one thing that I thought I could go around, the one thing that I thought I did not need uh, was something called gumbo filet. Uh, he says, I just left that totally out of the thing. And I said, that's why it tastes like this. Because you could have all the good ingredients. You could have the best crab. You could have the best sausage. You could have good chicken, a free range organic chicken. But if you forget the gumbo filet, the gumbo is just not going to taste the same. Are y'all in the building? Because there is something about building gumbo. You don't just put everything in the pot at one time. Uh, you begin to put a little bit in and let it cook. You put something else in and let it cook. You put something else in and let it cook. Come on, where y'all gumbo cookers? Uh, and you build the gumbo, but I don't care how much your ingredients cost. If you leave out certain ingredients, it's just not going to taste the same. Are y'all in the building? I came by to tell somebody that when you and I look at our development as believers, uh, there are some things that God says you got to have uh, to make sure we continue to develop. He says there are some things that you got to go through to make sure that you develop. Are y'all here? He says there's some circumstances that you have to go through to make sure you're developing. And is there anybody in here that can look back over your shoulder and recognize that even though I didn't like it at the time, 
even though I didn't understand it at the time, I bless God that I went through a time of hardship. I went through a time of struggle because I would have never known about the God that I serve, and I would have never known how strong I really am. Where are y'all at? Is there anybody that has ever gone through a circumstance, and you really didn't know God the way you know God now because you've gone through a circumstance? So if there had not been the loss of a job, if there had not been the loss of a spouse, if there had not been death that came in your family, you would have never known God, and you would have never looked to God the way you're looking to him now because it all matters in our development. Are y'all in the building? So you cannot have good things all the time and think you'll be balanced in your maturity and in your walk. God says, I love you too much not just to have good things happening in your life. I love you enough to sprinkle some stuff that is difficult, to sprinkle some stuff you don't understand, to sprinkle some stuff that you might not like and be angry with me because it adds to our development. All right, you still don't have it. Uh, many of you may not know this, uh, but, but Sister Trina, Sister Trina Johnson, uh, years ago, years ago, was a bodybuilder. Is that what you called it? Body, what you call it body sculpting? Bodybuilder. And, and, and I went to the same gym that she was going to, and I marveled at her muscles. Grew up with a guy that was just to the left. He went away on vacation or to fight fires. Come on, somebody knows what I'm talking about. He comes back and he swole. Muscles here. Muscles in his stomach, muscles in his neck, muscles in his eye, muscle in his nose. He <laughs> muscle. And he was a sight to see from the waist up. Because clearly, by the time he was in there, he only concentrated on his upper body and his legs looked like pencils. Sister Trina can tell you that the trainer that we had uh, did not just concentrate on one area of the body, but there was sometimes arm day, there was sometimes leg day, there was sometimes cardio day to make sure that there was a balanced development and that one area wasn't big and another area was small. They wanted to make sure that there was a balanced development. Are y'all here? And when God looks at your life and looks at my life, he wants to make sure that you're not up here in one area and down there on another area. And so God mixes things up in your life and mine to make sure that we are balanced and he can only do that with some good things and he can only do that with some things that we don't necessarily like. Are y'all in the building? Now come, come, come. The enemy is not afraid of what you're doing. The enemy is more afraid of who you are becoming. I'll give you that again. The enemy is not afraid of what you're doing, not afraid that you're coming to church, not afraid that you're dressing up and coming to church on Sunday, not afraid that you're tuning in on Wednesday in the Word, not afraid that you're coming to Hour of Power. As long as you just keep on coming and there is no development, the enemy is not bothered at all. But I came by to tell somebody that the enemy's goal is not just to stop what you're doing. The enemy's goal is to make sure he stops who you are becoming. Why? Because the enemy hates our God. And he hates it so much that when he looks at you and I, the goal is to be shaped and molded into the very image of his son. Jesus says, when you've seen me, you've seen the Father. And so every time you do something like the Father, it drives the enemy plumb crazy because he's not interested in stopping what you're doing. He's interested in stopping who it is you are becoming coming. I'll preach by myself. Preach, Pastor. And so at the end of the day, when the enemy looks at you doing something like God, it makes you look more like God, and it drives the enemy crazy. 
So when, when you forgive, it reminds him of him of God because you're looking more like your daddy. When you give, it drives him crazy because you're looking more and more like your daddy. Preach, Pastor. When you love folk, uh, it drives him crazy because you're looking more and more like your daddy. And the enemy is going crazy because he's not interested in what you're doing. He's interested in who you are becoming. And that is when he gets angry and scared. So when you come to church and you apply what it is you're listening and what it is you're hearing, the enemy goes crazy because now you run the risk of becoming what it is that God has ordained for you to be. You don't believe that? As long as Moses was watching sh uh, sheep, he had no issue. But as soon as he stepped into the role of what God had ordained for him to be, becoming what God had ordained for him, he started having issues. The moment that David was just out there by himself fighting lions and bears, he had no issue. It was only until he stepped into the face of Goliath, which ultimately catapulted him into God's purpose. I need you to hear me and I need you to see that the enemy is not concerned about what you're doing. You can come here all you want to. And as long as you come here and don't do anything to change your life, don't do anything to do a, a life any different, the enemy is content on you coming to church. And you and I think that we're doing God a favor when we're coming to church, but the enemy says, yeah, get up, go to church, listen to your church music on the way to church, but as long as you leave the same way, I'm content with that. It is only when you begin to look at yourself, look at where God has taken you, and begin to come into a different kind of person. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm going to show it to you in a minute. Now look, look, look. We already determined that Jesus sits down with his disciples for the last time before the cross. And they're sitting in a particular order. Talked about that already. John was sitting on the end because he's the youngest. Jesus is sitting next to John. And Judas is sitting next to Jesus. Peter is on this end, the lowest end of the table. Now look, 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 look. In their eating time, Jesus says, somebody is at the table that is going to betray me. And somebody is going to deny me. And he says, make no mistake, Peter, you're going to deny me. And Peter stands up and says, no, Lord, I would never deny you. As a matter of fact, I'll go to my death standing up for you. Jesus then is waiting, and he says, well, somebody else is going to betray me. And everybody is trying to figure out who it is. I already shared with you that that is an indicator of how Jesus, who knew who Judas was from the start, but yet treated them all the same, even to the very end. Do you know how difficult that is to treat somebody with love and honor and respect when you know that they are just waiting to stab you in the back? They're waiting to do you dirty. They're waiting to tear you down. Come on, where are the real folk at? It's very difficult even as a pastor to know that they don't have your best interest. They're waiting to sabotage. They're waiting to do something else different and still show them love to the very end. I've already told you that Master Jesus and Judas sitting next to each other and at some point in time the master of the house and the honored guest dip in a sign of friendship and eat bread together and on that night guess who occupied the honored guest spot it wasn't Peter it wasn't Nathaniel it wasn't James it was Judas himself now listen when we look at the gathering We automatically assume that Judas is the enemy. For good reason. How are you going to know me three years and for some money turn me over? That's like your mama opening the door to the feds. 
on you. Really, mama? Really? You gonna turn me in? Now come, come, come. Listen to me. I need you to hear me. Biblically, listen, an enemy is not someone that doesn't speak to you. That's for the petty people right along in there. And do you not know that I've grown enough? If you don't speak to me, God bless you. I'll still wave and keep it moving because you don't have a hell or a heaven to put me in. And if you're having a bad day, God bless you. I understand. When I see you next week, I'll wave to you again. Hopefully you'll wave. You'll see me. But no, no. Having an enemy is not somebody that doesn't invite you to a chicken after church. An enemy is not somebody that, that, that you know, just, just, just trying to do. No, no, no. An enemy, listen, listen, is anything. Any person, any circumstance that is trying to shut down who you are becoming. Come on, y'all shouted last week with Jackie. Come on, I'm back. <laughs> look, 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 look. An enemy is not somebody that talks about you. An enemy is not somebody that cuts you out. Listen to me, an enemy is anybody, any circumstance that the enemy may use that will stop you from becoming who God has ordained for you to be. Are y'all here? Let me give it to you one more time. Don't be petty and think that an enemy is somebody that is doing petty stuff. No, 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 no. I'm here and saved because God has a plan for me. And at the end of the day, the enemy's job is not to stop what I'm doing, it's to stop who I'm becoming. And an enemy is somebody that does everything they can to stop God's plan and purpose in your life. Now, for another sermon another time, the whole thing of it is, you got to know what God's plan and purpose is in your life. And if you don't know it, then, hey, anybody can, can. But I need you to see, for sake of our argument, I only got 10 minutes, that an enemy is one that tries to stop. And sometimes that enemy is you. Because sometimes your attitude, your temperament, are y'all here? Your disposition can stop. Hold up what God is doing in your life. So come, come. When you look at, listen, the only reason Jesus came to earth was to die. It's going to make sense. Stay with me. He didn't come to own property, didn't come to find a wife, didn't come to have children. The only person I know of that was born only to die is Jesus. That's why he came. Now listen, listen, listen. Before they get to the upper room, Jesus asks the disciples, who do men say I am? Some say you're Isaiah, some say you're Jeremiah, some say you're a great prophet. And Peter says, oh, 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 I, I know, I know. You are Jesus the Christ, the son of the living God. As they're talking, Jesus then said, I'm going to be taken by the hands of men. I'm going to be betrayed and I'm going to be killed. Peter stands up and says, I wish somebody would try to kill you. You don't see the problem. Maybe you all see it. Jesus came to die. He says, I'm getting ready and I'm close. Peter stands up trying to be big and bold and says, I'll never let them take you. I'll die before they take you to die. Are y'all in the building? It's swirling here. I'm going to try you all. Jesus came to die. 
That was his purpose. That was his mission. Peter says, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. Jesus says, I'm getting ready to die. I'm getting ready to give my life. And Peter stands up and says, it'll never happen. The same Peter that said a few moments ago by the revelation of the Holy Spirit that you are Jesus the Christ, when he tells Jesus, I'll never let you die, Jesus looks at Peter and does not say, get thee behind me, Peter. He says, get thee behind me, Satan. Why? Because Satan was in Peter's mouth. Satan was in Peter's mind. Why? Trying to stop Jesus from doing the very thing that he came here to do, which was to die for you and I. And the enemy, it could seem, was not Judas, but Peter. Do you all see that? Peter was trying to stop the purpose and plan for Jesus even coming. I just told you, biblically, an enemy is anything that the enemy can conjure up that stops who you're trying to be. Okay, can I give you a transparent moment? Uh, uh, a couple of people in here know this. Uh, 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 my wife says this all the time. A couple other people say this all the time. They, 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 they say, Brian, Brian, you are your worst enemy. And there are times I get epiphanies. Can I tell you when I get them? When I see people doing the same thing I can do, and they do it raggedy, and they do it foul, and it's not classy, it's, it's, not, it's not done in good taste, and yet people are flocking to them. They're buying their product, and I say, woo, if they only got a load of what the Lord gave me. Sometimes you can be your own worst enemy. Jesus came to die. Peter was trying to keep him from that purpose. And in a real sense then, Peter is, could be, the real enemy. Now can I take five minutes to unpack the other fella? Judas gets a bad rap. When they list the disciples' name, Peter is always first, Judas is always last. Maybe you didn't know this, but there's a book in the Bible called Jude, right before Revelation. The original writer of Jude, his name was Judas. Not Judas Iscariot, but he, he, you know there are other people named Judas. You all know there are other people named Jesus. He changed his name so that people would never mistake him for the betrayer, Judas. Come, come. Judas was instrumental in the death of Jesus. There was something in his heart regarding money. To the degree that there are times where he would steal from the treasury. Mm -hmm. Now, if you're in that bad shape, were you stealing from the church? Now, I take some money, you take some money out of somebody's purse, or but hey amen. When you. So he had something with money. The problem was, give me five minutes, they could not catch Jesus by himself. They wanted to kill him, stone him. He's messing up the whole political, social thing here. But they never could catch him. The crowds were around him. So they asked Judas, tell us where we can find him where no crowds are around. And we'll give you 30 people. We'll pay you to tell us. Took the money. And he said, on Thursday night, you'll find him where you want him. Far from the crowds. 
in the garden of Gethsemane. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Now listen, listen, listen. If it wasn't for Judas, they would have never found Jesus in the garden. If it wasn't for Judas, they would have never arrested Jesus. If it wasn't for Judas, they would have never took him to the uh, legal court with the scribes and the Pharisees. If it wasn't for Judas, he would have never stood before Pontius Pilate. If it wasn't for Judas, he would have never stood in front of Herod. If it wasn't for Judas, he would have never gone from Herod back to Pilate. And if it wasn't for Judas, Pilate wouldn't have said, I wash my hands of this because I don't see any guilt on this man at all. Uh, if it wasn't for Judas, uh, he would not have been scourged 39 times. If it wasn't for Judas, they wouldn't have gouged his head with a crown of thorns. If it wasn't for Judas, they wouldn't have tear his clothes off. If it wasn't for Judas, they wouldn't have spit in his face. If it wasn't for Judas, they wouldn't have marched him up a hill called Calvary and if it wasn't for Judas they wouldn't have put nails in his hands they wouldn't have put nails in his feet and if it wasn't for Judas he would not have hanged his head and gave up the ghost and if it wasn't for Judas he would not be put in a borrowed tomb and if it wasn't for Judas a dead Jesus couldn't have got up three days later with all power in his hands Judas seems like the friend to me because he did everything to move the very reason Jesus came to earth. So there's somebody that ought to thank God for the person that's getting on your nerves. You ought to thank God for the person that's standing in your way. You ought to thank God for the person that might be stabbing you in the back. But what they don't know is God may be using you not to hurt me, not to damage me, but to give me a footstool to go higher and higher because sometimes God will turn friends into enemies, but those enemies are really pushing you closer to what God has for you. I'm done. So who is the real friend? Peter tried to stop the plan of God. And Jesus says, get, back, get behind me, Satan. Judas, throw through, though through a dirty measure, God was really using him to move the purpose and reason why Jesus came. Can I give you this last one in two minutes I have? Jesus Seeing Judas, he is the only person, the account in Matthew, when he comes to kiss him, he says, friend, you betray me with a kiss? Nobody from all the gospels does he ever refer to them specifically as a friend. The only person he specifically calls friend is Judas. Because Jesus knew that though your motive is wrong, God is still using you to take me to the place that I need to be. So with the 30 seconds I have, be careful praying away your enemies because they may be just the catalyst that you need to go to where God is trying to take you. I, 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 I used to be an usher years ago. Every kid in the Baptist church, you're going to be an usher. It, it, that, that's just a rite of passage. Uh, easy uniform, black pants, white shirt, black tie. You're going to be, and, 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 and we learn how to, you know, march, and, and, and uh, I don't know the sign, I just know. What does this mean? Attention. I, I know this means fan. No, it don't mean fan. It means three people. Come three people. Okay, three people. Uh, fan. Sister Pat tried to help me years ago. Anybody know the red book? Come on, ushers know the red book. But here it is. Whenever. God gets ready to take you to another place, he uses an enemy 
to usher in. When Moses was leading the children of Israel out, his usher was Pharaoh. And Pharaoh told them, get out of here. And they took so much stuff. But the enemy was the usher. God had fired Saul and had anointed David to be the next king of Israel. But guess who was standing in the way? Goliath. But Goliath was David's usher into making sure that he assumed the kingship of Israel. When Jesus died on the cross, guess who was his usher? It was Judas, ushering him into his purpose and into his plan. So don't be too quick to pray to the Lord for your enemy to have a stroke or an accident or a heart attack. Okay, where the real folk at? I, I've prayed those imprecatory prayers. The Lord, don't kill him. Hey, that y'all ain't real. Maybe you all over here. Don't, 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 don't kill him. But, but, but just hurt him a little bit. Tell me what hospital they're in so I can go down and look over them. Shouldn't have been talking stuff. That, that, hey, that, that, that's what you get. <laughs> Praying away enemies when God uses them. That's why David says he'll prepare a table. Now, please know, please know he's not talking about a physical table in the original context. Uh, a table is in the canyon land. It has, it's like a mesa. And animals graze on top of what they call a table. But I still do believe that God loves you enough that despite everything the enemy did to you, that he leaves the enemy in proximity so they can see that in spite of all the stuff you try to do to them, I still bless them. And here they are. Come on, I wish I had the voice. So oftentimes, my enemies, your enemies, are necessary. So never think that I think that an enemy is somebody who opposes me in a meeting. It's not the enemy. Never think that I think that the enemy is somebody that doesn't want to go along with the vision. That's not enemy. That's just cantankerous, as Dr. Thompson would say. <laughs> and you pray them away. Let me close on this. Jesus died, and we'll move right into our, our communion. You have had a hangover. Really? You really want to do that to me? You've had a hangover. The way some of y'all looking now, you can't stay hardly half awake now. You probably... A hangover is not you drinking. It is the effects of what has happened the day or two ago. Here's what the Lord gave to me to close this. When Jesus died, I wasn't there. But his blood seems to keep hanging over my life and your life. Are y'all in the building? Is there anybody that had just blessed God for a blood hangover? He died 2,000 years ago, but his blood still has the power. He died on Calvary's cross, but the blood will never lose its power. It's still hanging over my life. And every now and then, I need the blood hang over because I need grace from the blood. I need forgiveness from the blood. I need love from the blood. So even though it happened a long time ago, his blood is still hanging over, and I still feel the effects of a blood hangover. 
which would have never happened if it wasn't for the frenemy, Judas, pushing him to shed his blood. Come on, let's pray. Father, we bless you and we honor you now. And we thank you even in your word that you show us who true friends are and true enemies are. And I pray even now for those of us that are experiencing and in relationships and in circles of influence where people seem to just uh, be antagonistic and seem to just get on their last reserve nerve. Help them to see that even people who are like that, they are instrumental in pushing us to where you have ordained for us to be. Lord, we thank you for the blood. Thank you that you didn't change your mind. Thank you that you didn't let Peter stand up and fight the soldiers off. But the songwriter says, like a lamb going to the slaughter, you gave your life for us. And we are eternally grateful. Thank you even for this day reminding us of the blood that was shed and the body that was given. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Come on, let's give the Lord a hand of praise in if you would. Amen. Listen, we're going to move uh, right into uh, our, uh, our communion period. Absolutely. That's no problem. No problem. As a matter of fact, I need one of the deacons to give her a communion element. We need to we need to do it. The, the, we need to do it right away so she won't miss her her bus. It's right outside. And if you would just stand with her in the foyer, tell the bus man, wave to him, say we're gonna be right out. But I need you to lead her through communion, even uh, in in the lobby there. God bless you, Sister Norfleet. Amen. Listen, it won't prolong the time. Every first Sunday we gather together. Some traditions, they do it every single service. But in our tradition, we do it every first Sunday. Jesus says, this do in remembrance of me. And isn't it interesting that the very thing that he came to do, die for us, is the only thing he specifically asked them to remember. He never said, remember how I walked on water or how I raised people from the dead. He never said, remember how I gave sight to the blind. The only thing he specifically tells us to remember is the reason why he came, which is to give his blood and his body. And so today, as they did in that upper room thousands of years ago, churches across the world still celebrate and remember that fateful day on Calvary's Hill when he shed his blood for you and I. Father, we bless you and we thank you as we partake together, taking the bread and drinking the cup. Help us not to just think that this is what we do on first Sunday, but that as Paul says, that we would discern the blood and body of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. That if it had not been for the blood, salvation and reconciliation, forgiveness and grace would have never been possible. So thank you for the blood that will never lose its power. Amen. First Corinthians chapter 11 starting at verse 23, the New King James Version says, For I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, on the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same manner he also took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat the bread and you drink of this cup, you do proclaim the Lord's death till he comes. 
Therefore, whosoever eats this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily in an unworthy manner is guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. But let man examine himself and let him also eat and drink of the cup. For whosoever eat and drink it un in an unworthy manner eats and drink it judgment to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this reason, many are weak and sick among you, and many sleep. I've just read to you Corinthians chapter 11, verses 23 to 20 to 30. God add a blessing to the readers of his holy word. Amen. Mountains. Why don't you go ahead and prepare your, your element? If you haven't already gotten it from the back of your, your pew. If you see somebody struggling to open it, please don't just look at them. Let's help them. The blood that gives me strength from day to day, it will never, it will never lose, it won't lose its power. Listen. The Bible says as they were eating, Jesus took bread, he blessed it, and he broke it, saying, take, eat, for this is my body. And likewise, he also took the cup, and when he had blessed it, he gave it to them, saying, drink ye all of it. Father, we bless you and we thank you just for this worship service. We thank you for what you've said. We thank you for your spirit being in this house. And even as we move into a week that we've never seen, we trust that our lives are in your hand. So develop us in areas where we need to be developed. Teach us in places where we need to be taught. And allow us to be shaped and molded into the very image of your son. So now unto him who is able to do exceeding and abundantly and above all we could ever ask or think, according to the power that worketh in us, to him be glory, majesty, dominion, and power, both now and forever. And all God's people said together, amen. Amen. We're going to ask Brother Wiseman to come and dismiss us. And the Bible says they sung a hymn and went out. So if we could continue just to sing as we go out. Brother Jaheen, let me help you. I need you to stand outside, brother. Stand outside. Let the people greet you. Let the people hug you. Amen.